Hello everyone, and welcome to the Netscope Advanced Analytics tutorial on creating dashboard filters. In today's video, we will be going over how to create a dashboard filter and how to customize dashboard filters. Starting off, we're going to be working with the dashboard here, Cloud Risk Assessment QBR, which you can access a copy of in the Netscope library. To start, I'm quickly going to switch the dashboard into edit mode by selecting these three dots on the top right hand side of the dashboard and then clicking edit. In this mode, we now have the ability to create and edit dashboard level filters which we can find over here on the top left hand side. This dashboard already has two dashboard level filters, event date, which is set to filter the data to the last 30 days, and access method, which filters the particular type of traffic you are viewing, such as inline traffic, traffic related to APIs, or logs. We can also move these filters around by grabbing and dragging them using the six dots that appear above the filter name. You may encounter a situation where you want to add another dashboard filter. For instance, what if you want to see this dashboard for a particular user? To do so, we will create a filter. To create a new filter, we're going to select the tab Filters above the filters already in place. This tab will provide us with two options, Add Filter and Cross Filtering. Today, we will only be using the Add Filter option. For information about cross filtering, please see the cross filtering video. When the Add Filter pop up appears, we will first need to select a date from the data collection from which we want to filter or search for a specific dimension or measure. For this dashboard, the collections from which we can select are application events page events, and alerts. However, you may have other data collections to choose from depending on the products you are using. For today's example, we are going to be creating a filter for page events using users. When you expand the tab for page events, you will notice that on the bottom we see a bunch of measures designated with a number sign and an orange line accompanying those values. When we expand the users tab, we can now see all the dimensions for which we can filter following a blue line. Throughout your experience with advanced analytics, you will notice that all measures are organized in shades of orange, such as orange font, orange tables, or orange lists, and all dimensions organized likewise in blue. From our Users tab, we will once again be selecting Users. Here we'll see our first set of customizations on the Settings page. Up here on the top, we have the title, which will default to the name of the value you are filtering for. However, it can be edited to be anything you would like it to be. Below title, we have controls, which is where you can edit how you would like the filter to be used when it is applied to the dashboard. Because we selected users, the default setting is tag list, which, like the other filters on our dashboard, allow users to search for the values they would like to display on the dashboard. Our other options are organized by the amount of values you can select when applied to the dashboard. Tag list is in the multiple selection section, which also includes button group and check boxes. Notice how when I selected button group, we have a new set of settings appear, which include display, giving you the option to organize data by inline or popover. To the right, we have the list of user values, which we can select for the finalized button group. Before we move on, let's take a look at the warning indicator here on the left above the value section. This indicator is letting us know that if we wanted to use the button group option for displaying the filter, we would have to select 30 or less values from the 643 for the filter to display as such. The warning would also appear if you were to select checkboxes with a maximum display value of 50. Coming back to the section in the control settings, we have single selections, radio buttons, button toggles, and drop-down menu. Radio buttons and drop-down menu will also give you value limit, and all three options will only allow the filter to display a single user at a time. The last section of the control settings is the advanced control section, which is useful if you have a very specific filter meant to configure the dashboard for only a few fixed controls. For our users filter, we will be using the default tag list option. Before we hit add, let's take a look at the widgets to updates page. In this view, we can see what widgets this filter will automatically apply to by highlighting the filter name in a blue font instead of gray, and by saying page event user as opposed to select a field. 
In this case, we see our top filter automatically being selected and a few towards the bottom. If we click on one of the widgets that did not automatically apply our new filter, they'll make the same adjustment but with data from the data pool that they pull from. For example, if we click on this first widget, to do applications that may need to be managed, we will see application events pop up, which will then prompt us to select a dimension or measure once again that we would like to apply to the widget. For all the widgets that automatically populate, we also have the ability to select Do Not Filter, which will create an exception for that widget from the filter. Also from this view, we can see the list of variables from which we selected that created our filter. Now, we can select Add, which will populate our dashboard. Then, we hit the Refresh button, and the filter will be recognized on the dashboard. Remember, in order for a filter to be reflected on the dashboard, you must always select the Refresh button. This has been the Netscope Advanced Analytics tutorial on configuring dashboard level filters. Thank you for watching.